Alright everyone, welcome back to part 7. This is going to be a video on trace repair. Now, I have this original Xbox, I picked it up recently, not working, I got it for free. And, um, I'm going to show you what happens when we try to press one of the power buttons. We get nothing coming out of it at all. If we press the eject button, we get a quick light and the fan starts to spin. And then the fan goes out. There's something going on here. It does this with all the components plugged in. So, and I want to show you what I found. This is the underside of this motherboard. As you can see, from here to here, a trace is broken. And from here to here, another trace is broken. What we'll have to do is locate solder points for these two traces and solder a wire in between them. Those aren't the only points on the board that are damaged though. As you can see in this screenshot, there are several points where the trace has been damaged. I'm sure you can guess by now which component caused these failures. I've already removed the clock capacitor and cleaned up around the area with the alcohol. The damages on the board that I showed you just now were in the vicinity of the clock capacitor. So I've cleaned the area up and we're going to now find the traces where we're going to solder to. I've gone ahead and labeled the points here in the screenshot, C1, C2, and C3. What you're going to want to do is get some flux on these points, put some solder on them, and use small wire, like around 30 gauge is what I'm using, and then you'll run these wires to another point on the board here. Now if you follow the trace path all the way up around the board, you'll find these three solder points. They're really close to where the IDE connector is soldered into. You're going to want to solder wires to C1, C2, and C3. Add some flux to the board, put some solder down, and then solder the wires into these points. So here I am filling in these solder holes and putting down wire C1. I am getting flux on the board up by the IDE port and putting some solder down into these holes. I'm putting cable C1 right here. And then here's C2. And here's C2 on the other side. And I'm going to add a little bit of solder over to the C3 point right here. And then here's the wire for C3. And now I'm going to connect the C3 on the other side. Now if you have some bad traces like I do underneath the clock capacitor, you can solder wires to these points for C4 and C5. And here are the points on the other side to connect to. While wiring C4 and C5, I notice this. Looks like I'll have to wire up C7 as well. I'll wire up C6 just in case it's broken somewhere and I can't see it. But it looks to be healthy, but we'll just wire it up anyway. Now that I've soldered all my wires and fixed all the traces that I could see that were damaged, I'm going to go ahead and put the motherboard back into the original Xbox and boot it up. Alright, here we go. Let's see what happens. It's alive! It's alive! 
Sweet, looks like the thing is working again. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull the motherboard out of the case and glue down my wires. I'm not going to get too crazy with cable management or anything here. I'm just going to toss it down. Then I'm also just going to perform a T-stop while I'm at it. And that's it. I reassembled the Xbox and it booted back up again, just like normal. So, In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to repair an Xbox DVD drive that doesn't open. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.